We've discussed many important topics during this panel, and we've explored many key talking points. In order to achieve results, we, need, we will need to work together as a community. Chloré wants to continue to be a resource for the community. Some of the ways they intend to do so are as follows. Continuing to sponsor events and initiatives within their capacity for Black-owned businesses and startups. Chloré's community event space, The Beauty Hub, is still available for use by the community for a variety of events and programs. Chloré will continue to support its growing creative network, the Chloré community. We'd like to explore more ways we can work together as a community and also ways that non-Black people of color can be better allies to the Black community to ensure that change is made where needed. Awesome. Okay, so this question's for all of you. Ooh. Mm. What are some ways that non-Black people of color can be better allies to the Black community? I think... I think one of the first ways, or maybe potentially, I think, easiest ways, is just doing research mm. and um, understanding your own personal biases. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to try to help the black community, you have to also understand who you are and what your biases are. Right. Because if you try to help the community and you don't understand your bias, you are actually potentially could be hurting the community. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important for, like... I have an individual I just literally had a conversation with this week and she said to me, um, you know, Dwayne, I'm so proud of my mom because I've been trying to tell her that, you know, some of the things she's been saying that she can't say it anymore. And it's a, it's a, it's a young white lady. And she said, my mom is finally actually listening to me and she's now starting to watch videos and she's watching, um, listening to podcasts and she's educating herself so she can better understand you know, really, what is the E and I? You know, mm. why is it that you know black community have some of the challenges that they have? And that to me was very, very meaningful because now she's going to take a look at herself and understanding why is it she believes certain things that she does believe, so then she can unlearn those things, so she can have a meaningful conversation with the black community. I think that's how people can help themselves. Non-black individuals can help themselves by then supporting the black community. Mm -hmm. I would say um, <clears throat> this is a point where I have to shut out my mama because she she does this. She's a leader in diversity and in inclusion, and um, she works with many organizations and people to educate them on different struggles. Um, but of course, our struggle. And I think that um, as we're in Black History Month, I always like to say that while we celebrate in this month, we celebrate always. And so being a good ally doesn't mean just showing up publicly. It doesn't mean just showing up in Black History Month. It means doing the background work, the things that we don't see. Yes, like reposting and raising awareness. Are you on the ground with us when we're on the ground? Are you learning all the things that you need to learn about our history, right? And when you're in, you know, areas of influence, when I think of like our teachers, when I think of, you know, our, you know, mayoral candidates and, you know, all of those people, are you putting your best foot forward when it comes to giving out information? Are you going the extra mile or are you just reading off of a teleprompter? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really doing that deep dive. Um, and like Dwayne said, it's unlearning, right? And and recognizing the biases, recognizing our differences. Um, yes, some people will say, well, we live in Canada and it's great and these things don't exist anymore, but they do. Um, and they do for many different reasons. It comes from not understanding the differences and from the fact that we actually live those differences. Um, and so I think when you recognize that, being open and aware, um, following pages, even on Instagram, TikTok, that raise awareness and can teach you about our culture. Um, and of, of course, I have to say this, but no shade, but when you take something or sample something from our culture, always give ode to where it came mm -hmm. from instead of just repackaging it mm -hmm. because yes. then culture gets lost in that. Mm -hmm. So I think when you do all of these steps, diversity and inclusion becomes a lived thing right. and we have way better allies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, there's a number of things. And I agree with everything oh everything you guys were saying um i 100 percent agree but one of the things i would definitely say is have an intention mm -hmm. for why you want to help not just helping because it seems like i have to do it or because i have that one black friend you know or mm -hmm. I, I don't want to come off this way if you don't know something and you're not sure why sometimes it's better to just stay out of it um and ask the right questions go and have a conversation with somebody and ask those hard questions i feel like a lot of times people are afraid to ask these questions mm -hmm. and they do these blanket statements of we support this that. i don't want to see another blanket statement i want to know what is your action do you have 
people of color within your organization. A lot of these people or friends, they, and I want to talk from an organizational standpoint in particular, a lot of organizations, they support black films or they produce or they purchase black films or pro promoting these things, but you don't have anybody black in your, in your organization that supports mm -hmm. the messaging. We, we see all these campaigns where these monkey t-shirts are coming out or these mm -hmm. packaging. You are not sitting here and thinking, could this be offensive? Mm -hmm. And if and and you know what and it's as simple as going to and even if you don't have any black friends posting it on Facebook somebody knows somebody black or if it's a different culture or something would this be offensive asking somebody for those those insights really taking the onus to ask questions mm -hmm. um and and it, as silly as it may seem to 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 you you know it could be offensive to somebody else so really being intentional in how you want to show up and where you're going to do that um and then supporting in the best way that you know how Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that might not be a public post because a post is a post for a post for a post. Yeah. But when there's no action behind it or there's no intention, out, when there's no change yeah. behind mm -hmm. what it is you're doing, I don't, I don't care about your post. I would rather know you had a conversation with somebody of color and you've made an internal change, mm -hmm. a heart change, an organizational change, because those things go a long way because as you know, you were saying your friend's mother, it switched for her. Mm -hmm. So maybe now her interactions with people of color are going to be less hostile if mm -hmm. that's, and I don't know her to make it, but you know what I mean? It's going to be mm -hmm. a little bit more hostile and that less hostile, hostile moment may be a different interaction for somebody else, yep. maybe a different outcome for another person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to add to you like that, that, that statement about questions, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes you support and you're reposting all sorts of stuff and you don't even know that it's harmful. Yes. Um, and when I think of, you know, the George Floyd era, which we're, we're still recovering from, mm. that was one of the worst times of mm. my life. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first times that social media, I felt, could take me out. Mm -hmm. And when Blackout Tuesday came and we had all these allies, <laughs> nobody asked why. Oh, and wow. what it actually did was it hid information about yes. the protest. It hid information about what was going on with George Floyd and family and the case. Right. And so you know, in this blanketed attempt to be an ally without asking, wait, but what does that do? We've now hidden information from people mm -hmm. who do want to get on the ground and be allies. Mm -hmm. And so you always have to ask, okay, if I take this action, how does it contribute back, yes. right? If yeah. I'm investing in this organization, what is the work that they actually do that shows me that they are doing the things that they yes. say so? So you right. do have to ask those questions to make sure that you're helping and not harming by accident. Yes. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, you know, I'll say, being an ally is not easy, mm -hmm. right? Because being an ally is asking you to really look at yourself yes. and look at what privileges you've been able to yeah. take advantage of and then also asking yourself, am I willing to make space mm. for others to participate in that privilege? Yeah. Right. You know, one of the things that, I've never heard anyone in the black community say is that, you know, because you were privileged, you need to have less so I can have more. Mm -hmm. That's never been a conversation. It's really about if you want to be an ally and you have privileges that are available to you, how do you now make that privilege also available to me? Mm -hmm. right. If I'm coming to you as a leader in the bank and you have access to finance and I have my business and you can help me, what can you do to open up the doors just a little bit wider mm -hmm. so I have that opportunity now mm -hmm. to go and take my creativity, my intelligence, and do something phenomenal in my business so I can then help support my family and the next generation, right? Mm -hmm. right? Create that space for us. Whether you, whether you, even if sometimes you don't even think you have that power of influence, if you are non-black, you have opportunities that black people don't have. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Including you know, any other, not let's say non-white, but non-black, <laughs> you also have more opportunities than, you know, a lot of black folks. Mm -hmm. So help create that space mm. where we can walk through that door and also benefit from some of the uh, uh, advantages that you've been able to, to get through the system. Absolutely. Mm. If I could put just a thread through all of your points here, it's active allyship, but more importantly, intentional mm -hmm. allyship, and even more importantly, being flexible in how you share that allyship. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you're exactly what you mentioned, somebody who has access to more information in the financial industry, how can you create that space for 
black folks to then come up and learn that information or gain mm -hmm. that knowledge if it's in any other industry right how can you use your privilege to support and uplift black people mm -hmm. and the black community mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. awesome now, my next question is for Jackie and Dwayne specifically. Ooh. So as people who are both skilled at bringing people together and building strong networks, how important would you say it is for black people in all industries to collaborate rather than to compete? Mm. Yeah, it's critical. <laughs> it's critical. It's, it's actually a personal mandate of mine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every event that I do, regardless of who I do it for, I try to find some other black professionals to collaborate with. I, mm -hmm. I talked about, you know, the BNI initiative before. I literally went out there and worked with people I've never worked with before because this was such a massive event. And I wanted to make sure I, you know, I had black photographers, black videographers, black AV, you know, black florists. I've got black designers, black artists. And we brought all of these people together. I, 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 it makes me smile because we on that for that same event we had a zoom call where i brought everyone together and a lot of them didn't know each other we had 20 black event professionals mm -hmm. on this zoom call and i just smiled because most people don't believe this exists mm -hmm. right they right. don't believe so collaboration is so important mm -hmm. it's so important and open communication with that collaboration is critical yeah and making sure that we're all on the same page and what it is that we want out of whatever experience that we're doing uh, to make sure that we're all successful in achieving our end goal because we don't want to be in a place where we're collaborating but not seeing eye to eye or understanding the end goal. So collaboration is absolutely key to success for me. Yeah, I definitely agree. We need to do more of it more often. Um, but I would say collaboration without undermining. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's something we do a lot in our community. Um, and we don't give the same heckle to somebody else. And we're you know we have to build more together because when we do more together we achieve a lot more a lot of other communities have been able to build and over and exceed their 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 presence in other spaces and we seem to be so far behind because there's this competition complex and i think we really have to understand that you and i could have the exact same recipe for spaghetti and I use this scenario all the time, but the way you were raised in your household, the way you cook, the way you do things, the way you season your, your meats, it's going to taste different. And so when people ask me all the time, like, oh, you share too much about sponsorship. You give all these people this contact, that contact, because what's for me is for me. Mm -hmm. And you and I, I don't look, you're not a competition to me because how you operate and you think, how you think is how you do it. I'm never going to think and operate the same way you are. Um, and, and, you know, and a lot of people think about this, oh, they're going to try to copy. People can't copy your IP. They can attempt, but it will never be done the way mm -hmm. you're, you're doing it. But imagine now two different people, three different people, four different people with different IPs, different ideologies come together and create magic. Do you know how powerful mm -hmm. of a community you are powerful of an impact you can be an inspiration to others? Um, so I think we need to get out of this cloud of trying to pull each other down. And it's just like, just let one of us get on top. We will bring everybody else. But mm -hmm. we need to get there and get a firm foundation because it is harder for us at the top in certain spaces. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's these things about people of color in general, these stigmas that we have as black women or black men or when we're in these positions. Let us get there, create a foundation, root our feet because as long as we're planted, I can carry your weight and mm -hmm. then you could carry somebody else's. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something we need to kind of put into our mindset is sometimes let's let somebody just firm themselves. Mm -hmm. And then once they firm themselves and they drop seeds, we're all going to bear the fruits of everyone's labor. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing. And collaboration is so important. Um, and particularly Toronto based, a lot of us get into this habit that Toronto people are stush. We don't share, we don't collaborate. Um, it's a thing, but it is also a thing everywhere else in the world too. Yeah. When I talk to people in the US, it's a thing there. So let's remove these barriers and really start being like, how do I help? And sometimes helping without an end goal. You're not, not everything's mm -hmm. gonna be a benefit. Mm -hmm. It's like, you have to help me, so now I need financial advice from you. That help could come tenfold and not everything has an immediate dollar value. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us look at, well, I gotta help you and it's a dollar value here, but that $3,000 you got immediately, you've missed out on the possibility of Dwayne might know a couple millionaires. Mm -hmm. And that collaborating with him without pay means I now have access to his 
demographics, his audience, and that three thousand turned into three million. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You you have to weigh the pros and cons and not look at everything as a transaction yeah. mm-hmm. and look at it as an open experience for future right transactions. Right. Right. Brilliant. Yeah, and I think you know. I think you know. You said something that I. I try to, and this is very, very difficult, but I try to make sure in all the conversations that I have is kind of change the narrative about how we speak and how do we speak yes. about our community. So yes. even when we talk about potential challenges, like those challenges exist everywhere. It's yes. not just in our community. So we don't right. have to identify right. it as a black community thing, yes. mm-hmm. right? Like we are undermining each other or we're doing this. Every community does that. So it's just, it is what it is. Mm. And let's understand that we're all different. So we're going to see things differently. We don't all have to agree to everything, but it's not a black thing. Yes. Right? Let's just take that off of it and understand that, you know, we're just going to move forward and whatever positivity is there, we're going to take that and run with it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Awesome. Okay, great. My next question is for Ebony. So let's talk about group economics for a moment. What are some things that we need to be doing as a community on a whole to better position black people for building generational wealth? I could talk about this all day. Um, And the first way that I want to talk about this is with one of my own goals. Um, Remember I talked about that I was so broke and my account was in overdraft and they didn't make eye contact with me. And um, at that time, I I like to say that I'm a 26-year-old woman, but I'm really a 70-year-old woman. Like I've been here before. And so I was thinking about generational wealth in my 20s. So I, I had a midlife crisis at the age of 21. And I was thinking about my kids and my kids' kids and their kids. And how can I create that generational wealth? Most people don't think like that. The other side of that thought was, um, when I think about the change, Black History Month, scrap it, Black History Year, right? Um, to, to build a community takes dollars, mm-hmm. right? And so every time I hear somebody say, well, you can't throw money at your problems. Sure you can. Mm-hmm. And the problem is that our community just doesn't have enough money to throw yet. Mm-hmm. And so one of my personal goals is really to, I don't want to own a school, but I'd like to put enough money in it where they could basically put my name on it. I would also like to own a prison. I would also like to own politicians. I would like to make sure that when when our community says no to something, there is no laughing, there is no talking, it's changed. And the mm-hmm. thing is that this is the way the world works. Um, we as a community, the reason why we're playing catch up is because we don't have enough dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Like the black dollar to put on our challenges, right? If we don't like a system, throw some money on it, right? And Mm so when it comes to generational wealth, it's more than just impacting the life of your next generation. It's Mm -hmm. uprooting and building a community. Mm -hmm. When a brand comes out and does something that is uh, laughable because it's so discriminatory, we never have to shop there again because we take our dollar Mm -hmm. and we move it. The black community, one, we are the biggest consumers. Mm So when people say like the black community, oh, we don't have, we have money. And if we don't have money, we're going to find it. Mm-hmm. And so we're the biggest consumers and yet brands still take us as a joke thing. And so mm-hmm. generational wealth is making sure that we're taken seriously in every single space. And when it comes to, um, you know, making those practices to build that generational wealth, it's having these conversations. It's understanding that a lot of our struggle comes from the fact that we weren't allowed to build wealth in the first place. Mm-hmm. It's putting systems in place. It's addressing those mindsets, right? It's addressing those habits that we've got. And it's also about like thinking long term, right? Uh, I, as much as like, I know some day traders and they're great. And they're like, yeah, today I made $40,000. Yesterday I made, I lost 80,000. Mm-hmm. Most people can't be an investor by trade because we don't have enough capital, right? And so you're not going to make 200% overnight. And, and I find like, when I think about the larger things that challenge our community, things like crime, right? Um, a lot of people in crime, it's just like, you just want to make the money quick, right? Entrepreneurship. We just want to make the money quick uh, in a job. We just want to climb the ladder quick, right? Because we, we think that things can move faster. Generational wealth is a long game. It's a game of if I want to impact two generations down the line, I've got to have a big enough life insurance policy. I've got to have not, we talked about this earlier, right? I don't just have a business. My kids might not My kids might hate numbers and be like, I don't know how you did this thing, dude. And so it's having a business system, right? Whether my kids want it or not, it's something that is still lucrative and can pour back into the community. And then, of course, it means that whether you're a professional or an entrepreneur, if you are currently code switching, it means going back to the roots. You said this earlier, right? Once you get to that position, Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, when I I had like tears in my eyes when you were talking about the event and how you're looking for, you know, the black florist and that says a lot about you right because if you're in a position to make those decisions and you don't 
generational wealth is not even on the table, right? Mm. Because we want to put food in the plates of our community. And it doesn't mean that we're only doing it, right? But it means that we're, we're taking actions and making investments with intention. Right. And when we do become wealthy and we do build that generational wealth, that there's a system in place to make sure that we're then feeding the community to uplift, right? To me, generational wealth is not just familial. It's mm. community-wide. And the marker of success for generational wealth is not just that your kids will eat, but that their kids' kids will eat and the community will eat as a result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much to our panelists. We had such a fantastic conversation. So many gems were dropped, and I'm really hoping that folks are able to take away from this fantastic conversation that we had. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? i just say that um, for people in the community, understand that there is no limit. Your only limit is yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, there is no there is no rule. There is no law. There is no systemic system that can really hold you back because we're such a resilient people and we're so capable of so many things. But it really just starts with, again, like taking these notes, asking for help, putting the right systems in place, setting a plan to build that generational wealth and defining what you want it to look like for you. And then just go out and get it and, and really, again, embrace not competing right? But collaborating so that we can build that community. So this has been a really robust conversation. And uh, I thank you for the questions and the great job that you did. And I really appreciate it being on a panel with all, all of you uh, amazing ladies. Okay. You know, the message that I would want to leave everyone with is a reminder that we're, we're, we're more alike than we are different at the end of the day, regardless of what we think of each other. Um, because you can look in every person and find something that you like about them. And the minute that we can, we can do that in our community, everywhere we go with everything that we touch and see, um, I think it will give us all an opportunity to come together as a collective and support each other in every aspect of our life, whether it be in business, whether it be in personal. Um, and, and I think once we walk with that understanding and walk with love, um, we'll all benefit from it. So that's what I would like to say. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, this has been a really dynamic conversation. What I would say to those that are in the entrepreneurial journey or just looking to get ahead in life, when you're doing something different and you are the blueprint, the burden's heavy. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, it's understanding the weight in which you want to carry. And I think when you start understanding that weight, life becomes a little bit easier because now you really know the grasp of what it is that you're trying to do in this life. And ask for help a lot of us get into the space where we don't want to ask for help really lean if we're gonna if we talk about community you have to invite community in so that starts with stepping out of your comfort zone asking for help you are gonna fail and the at certain things in life and the one thing about it is failure is so important mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there's a negative connotation about failure but it really allows you to see where you are and you need to know you need to fall in order to know how how much you can stand and i think you know allow yourself to fail but allow yourself to grow within that failure as well allow yourself to see yourself um and give yourself grace a lot of us carry things um <clears throat> of that generational burden, mm -hmm. that generational wealth. We want to do it, but give yourself grace. And why I said in the beginning, when you when you are the blueprint, the burden's heavy, because that doesn't mean you have to carry that the whole way, but you yeah. can start. Yeah, You can start a foundation and then people along the way can help you build that. Um, but again, ask for help. Uh, seek, build your own community. Like-minded tribe is a real thing. Find people around you that support your vision um, also challenge your vision as well, um, because challenges help you grow. Um, and I think a lot of us, I know those are things I wish I knew when I was, mm -hmm. you know, starting out that challenges help you grow, um, volunteer your time, take the opportunity, no matter how much money you make, give yourself to different opportunities because you really will challenge yourself and see how far you go. And that's also about building your network and be very cognizant of, <clears throat> the network that you want to be around and surround yourself with the people that you surround yourself are not an indicator of who you are, but they're indicator of how successful you can definitely be mm. in mm. life. Mm. I'll also ask all of you to please also let us know where we can find you online and any initiatives that you may have coming up soon. So you can find me online at is well connected. That is my personal, my business is well connected T O uh, and I can be found at the well on social. And uh, any initiatives, I mean, there's always something going on uh, in my life, but I'm definitely 
an open book for just creative channeling thoughts. So um, I definitely slide in the DMs, book a call, 15 minute call if you just want to talk about ideas or strategies or suggestions. Like sometimes you just need an open ear of somebody who doesn't need anything or want anything, but it's just definitely here to help. So I definitely open my calendar all the time for people who just want to ideate and uh, chat. So yeah. For myself, you can find me on uh, TikTok and Instagram at underscore Ebony. And that is spelled E-V-O-N-I dot E-L-L-E, Ebony L. -L -E, um, you can also find me at Ebony L dot com. And on LinkedIn, you can find me at Ebony Ledford. Um, you can always, again, just like Jackie, just hop in my DMs and ask me questions. I'm always putting up some different information if you're just looking to zoom in. And then for... Um, events and initiatives i have the secure the bag summit coming up uh for you know bipoc entrepreneurs and professionals really to secure that bag this year so be sure to hop over to my instagram tap in and get your free ticket because we're eliminating barriers for you to succeed uh Dwayne rutherford debonair corporate events um you can largely find me on linkedin i am on social media as well at debonair corporate events um on instagram and facebook but largely on linkedin is where my space and hangout is so connect with me there let's have a convo always open to uh networking with the community and learning and and sharing what i've learned so far in life huge thank you to our wonderful panelists today there were so many gems dropped and i really hope folks were able to take away some key knowledge from today's conversation we'll be heading out but for all of you continue to spread love and we'll see you again next time